I mean, I'm, I got 26 years in the game. I got 30 altogether if you count my time in juvie and, and working with um, kids at the Parks and Recreation. I've never seen kids think, not even actually do it, think that they should challenge adults physically. I said, that's a complete breakdown in the structure. So as we dug into it, they were like, well, what do you mean? Give me an example. And so I want to hit this part of the conversation in three ways. I want to talk about the structure of a school, because I am an educator, for those of you who don't know. I want to talk about the team you work with, whether that's the other teachers, staff, support. And then finally, I want to talk about the thing that's probably the most important, at least it's most important to me, which is my relationship with my students, players, athletes, you know, whatever. So when it comes to structure, what I said to them, I said, it's clear that there's not a structure in place in terms of if you have a complaint or you want to talk to someone, there's no structure. You guys just bypass your teachers and try to walk, walk to the office. That's never going to work. Um, you should let your parents know. Parents um, come and talk to the, the teachers or parents, whatever. That's not happening. You guys are doing stuff and your parents are coming after the fact. So there's not a clear structure in place. I don't believe that the kids know who all the authority figures are. And that may seem obvious. Well, all the teachers are the authority figures. Yes and no. And what I mean by authority figures is people who the children believe can get things done. That's a very big difference between the person who runs your classroom. There is always a couple of people on campus, whether it's can get you a piece of candy, get you something to eat, help you get some clothes, whatever. There are certain people you know you can go to. There's your old kindergarten teacher who you know is the most fun lady in the world. She always got Dr. Seuss stuff in her room. Or there's that middle school teacher that you know knows any and everything about science. You can go to him and ask him about whatever. So that's what I mean when I say authority figures and people who, who, are, who are in positions of leadership. You should know who to go to for certain things. And it's clear that they don't know who those people are. Even though we have people with the labels or hold those positions, they don't know who those people are. I also believe that in terms of teamwork, and again, I have to be very careful how I say this, but I, there's only one way to say this part. This is not a well-functioning institution. And the reason you know that is because there are people on campus who believe that because their area is working well, then there's no reason to be concerned with other areas. That is a losing mentality. Because anybody who plays sports or anybody who works in business knows you can't do that. You can't be the maintenance staff and say, well, it ain't got nothing to do with me because your business will never do well. You can do that, but you won't do well doing it. Successful places, they all work together. That doesn't mean you have intimate knowledge about their area, but you understand that the areas are connected. On this campus, it is a regular thing to hear people say, well, yeah, our group is doing what they need to do. Or we took care of our stuff. There is no we on the, on the large scale, and the kids can tell that. They know we don't work together. And, and so one of the things that's new for them is that I do go and talk to other people and find out from each other. Like, well, how do you know that? I said, because I wouldn't talk to them. They said, well, why would you go talk to them? Because we work together and we're all trying to do the same thing, help kids. And you can see the looks on their faces when they hear that response from me. The final thing, and this was the most pressing thing and what I shared a little bit earlier was the relationships. I'm trying to build relationships with students in a, in a way I've never had to do before. By this time of the year, man, I probably know the parents' middle names by now because I've talked to them so much. But because I'm now a special area teacher or an elective teacher, I see kids once a week, most of them, some of them twice a week. So I've not built a rapport. I can honestly tell you it's the first time in my life I don't know all my students' names. Well, there's more than 500 of them, so I don't know all their names. But it, it's so weird to go into a classroom and not know everybody's names. A lot of it is just because, you know, they don't come with name tags or they're all different ages. I service everybody from kindergarten through eighth grade. And that to me is frustrating. Now, people who have been special area teachers for a long time, they've got a system down. They know all the kids' names. And, you know, they, they know how to function in my position a lot better than I do. This is my first time doing it. It's not an excuse. It's just a fact. And so my relationships that I have built with these students are far behind where they've been in the past. And so I'm not beating myself up about it, but I am recognizing the fact that it's a far more difficult thing to do as an elective slash special area teacher. But I think 
my takeaway overall is that I'm looking at this place and saying, man, you know, where do you start? Like, what do you try to address first? What, what improvements do you try to make to yourself to try to make the situation work better? And the kids gave me the answer without, and I'm looking everywhere and the answer was right in front of me. I've got to earn their trust some way, somehow. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that. This is, for me, felt uh, uh, well into the year. If you're a middle schooler, particularly the eighth graders, for them, it's the year's almost over because they're going to spend another maybe nine weeks doing a little bit of learning, taking some assessments. And then after that, it's cruise control. They're going to be waiting to promote, looking at what high school we're going to next, all that kind of stuff. So for the eighth graders, it's almost done. For everybody else, there's still some time. But that's got to be my next challenge is how do I build trust with a group of kids who have never trusted anyone? 